Hello everyone! On today's episode of Terrius Talks Tech, we have three topics as usual. Our first topic is going to be about Ryzen 2 and some leaked slides that seem to imply that Ryzen 2 is going to be out a lot sooner than expected. Then we'll talk briefly about the new Titan V from Nvidia, the most powerful consumer graphics card to date. Finally, last week there was some shenanigans discovered about the RX 560 from AMD and a silent drop in the specifications for it. So we'll take a look at that as well. First up, the AMD Ryzen story. This is from TechSpot. So according to some leaked slides on MeoPC.net, and you can see on their map here, it says Q1 of 2018. And you can see that the Ryzen 3 mobile APUs are supposed to be coming out. The Ryzen mobile APU Pros. And you can see there's an overlap halfway into quarter one or maybe a third of the way into quarter one. So from what we've heard, this won't actually be Zen 2, which is the next revision of the Zen CPUs. This is kind of a stopgap. It's what's currently running on the APUs that are being put into laptops. So it has fancier core boost technology and things like that, and has a lot of IPC optimization in it. But you can see on the timeline here, this was the 2018 is Pinnacle Ridge, which is using the Summit Ridge architecture, and it's supposed to be a performance uplift and still using socket AM4. The new chips are going to be built on the 12 nanometer process node from Global Foundries rather than the 14 nanometer node that they're currently using for Summit Ridge. And it's called Zen Plus rather than Zen 2 because this isn't the full revision which isn't expected to come out until 2019. So it's definitely going to be very interesting to see what actually launches here in February if it actually happens in February. But it's expected that the 400 series of chipsets will launch, so the X470 and B450 motherboards. And then after that will likely be the cheaper A series boards. Okay, NVIDIA Titan V, the most powerful PC GPU ever created. And you can get your very own Titan V for the awesome bargain of $29.99 US. Limit 2 per customer. However, SLI is not enabled for these cards and neither is NVIDIA Link. So I don't know why you'd want two of them. So it's got 110 deep learning teraflops, 3D stacked memory, and 21 billion transistors. 12 gigabytes HBM2. The boost clock is 1455. CUDA cores 5120. Pretty impressive sounding. And we have an Anantech article about it. The big thing with the Anand Tech article is they take a look at the comparison between it, the Titan XP, and the Tesla cards. The Tesla cards are their professional deep learning cards. So you can see the CUDA cores are the same between the Titan V and the V100. The Tesla P100 was the Titan XP equivalent. So it's the previous generation of Tesla card. The boost clock is higher than the V100. That's kind of expected being that this is a consumer grade card, so it's able to boost its actual GPU performance a bit. It doesn't have to have as much memory bandwidth or memory running, which means that some of that extra power can be used to bump up that clock speed a bit. 1.7 gigabits per second HBM2 instead of 1.75, a 3072-bit bus instead of a 4096, 653 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth rather than 900 gigabytes per second, but still much higher than the Titan XP, which was only 547 gigabytes per second. The VRAM is 12 gigabytes instead of 16, so it's the same as the Titan XP. The L2 cache has gone up. It's 4.5 megabytes instead of 3 from the Titan XP, but slightly lower than the 6 megabytes from the V100. Single precision teraflops. It's 13.8 instead of 12.1 from the Titan XP. So that's a fairly decent jump. Double precision is an insane jump over the Titan XP. So it would appear that they've unlocked more performance for double precision computing on the Titan V versus the Titan XP because it looks like the Titan XP was only able to operate in double precision 1 32nd whereas now it's able to work at 1 half and of course the deep learning cores this deep learning section this is what Volta is actually designed for it's the kind of AI advancement learning protocols the processors on there in order to enable it to be able to use deep learning algorithms. Transistor count is the same as the Tesla V100, same TDP, same form factor, 
The Tesla card is passive, of course, because it's going into data center servers, so it has plenty of air moving through the cases. The biggest difference here is going to be that the price of the Volta server card is $10,000 and this card is only $3,000. When you look at it like that, it seems like a great bargain. Now the Titan XP was only $1,200 or $1,300, so it's more than double the price. There have been a lot of tech sites that have gone out and bought their own Titan Vs because Nvidia was not giving them out to most tech sites because they're not intended for gaming. However, it's the first card on the new Volta architecture and it's likely going to trickle down into the regular graphics cards anytime now. So it's kind of an important card to benchmark. It's like the Founders Edition Vega cards when they came out. While it might not be intended for gaming, it's no different really than a gaming card, so it should run just fine. It's using the same standard driver set as the graphics cards for gaming will. So all in all, it's actually fairly reasonable to expect it to be used for gaming in some ridiculous circumstances. Now, most people buying it are not going to be spending $3,000 just to game on it. They're going to be wanting to use it for workloads that require that extra power and they can justify that extra cost. There have been some benchmarks posted already, some early benchmarks, but so far they're not really professionally done. They're just kind of a first look at the card. It'll be a lot more interesting to see once Linus and Gamers Nexus and all of those channels start posting reviews of the card. Okay, and our final article here is from Anantech. AMD silently lowers Radeon RX 560 specifications, now covers RX 460 class product. Womp womp womp. So AMD slightly lowered the specifications of the RX 560, encompassing parts with 14 CUs and 896 stream processors, and allowing them to be sold alongside the standard 16 CU 1024 stream processor parts. Now the real big problem with this is that there is no identification between the two. It is going to be all up to the add-in board partners, such as ASUS, XFX, Sapphire, Gigabyte, MSI, all of those companies basically have to identify on the box how many cores they have. Unfortunately for most people, they don't actually understand what the stream processors are or why they should care if one has more than the other and the prices will likely be slightly cheaper on the ones that have fewer cores, so they might think they're getting a really good deal when really they're not. So you can see here, these are the screen grabs from the website. The top one is the original one. It said stream processors 1024, compute unit 16. Now it did say max compute unit 16, so that's kind of interesting. And then you can see on the new specification it says 14 or 16 compute units with 896 or 1024 stream processors. So basically, the new 560 variant covers the old RX 460 variant, and the big thing that confuses me is why they didn't just add something onto the end of the 560 title for these reduced chipsets. It could have been like RX 560 LE. They've used that kind of naming in the past, and it's kind of an industry standard where if you have a stripped down part, but you want to continue using the same name, you just add something onto the end as a suffix. Now they are keeping the same base and boost and memory speed and everything, so theoretically it won't be that big of a difference. But the other big change is one will have two gigabytes of memory and the other will have four gigabytes of memory. So while the memory will be clocked the same and it will be the same speed of memory, it's going to have significantly less of it. And then at the end of the article here, AMD has provided a full comment. It's correct that the 14 compute unit and the 16 compute unit versions of the RX 560 are available. They introduced the 14 CU version this summer to provide AIBs and the market with more RX 500 series options. So I don't understand why they didn't create a new tag for it then if they were intending to create more options for the 500 series, but they chose not to for some reason. It's come to their attention that on certain add-in board partner and e-tail websites, there are no clear delineations between the two variants. They're taking immediate steps to remedy this. They're working with all add-in board partners and channel partners to make sure product descriptions and names 
clarify the CU count so that gamers and consumers know exactly what they're buying. They apologize for the confusion this may have caused. The problem is that most gamers aren't going to be buying 560s, and most consumers that are buying 560s do not understand what CU count actually means, as I said earlier. So unfortunately, it's going to be a bit confusing for most people when they go to buy a RX 560 and they have two different, completely different options that look the same and sound the same, but they're not the same. And from what people have shown on listings of them, they're actually priced almost identically, so it's going to be very difficult for people to understand which is which. So it's unfortunate that AMD decided to go that way. It really would have been super easy for them to just call it a 560 LE or special edition or something. They could have done something, but they chose not to. So anyway, that's about all I have for today. I'm really looking forward to the Zen Plus architecture and seeing what it's capable of. There were some leaked slides that turned out to be extremely fake, where somebody was showing 12 core Ryzen chips with 5.1 gigahertz speed. That's not going to happen. It's definitely a hoax. It's still going to be interesting. If they can bump the base and the boost up by 200, 300 megahertz, it's going to make a huge difference. And if they can get faster memory speed supported, then that's going to make an even bigger difference because Ryzen really, really increases in performance the faster the memory you can put with it. Unfortunately, a lot of the higher speed memory has some serious issues with support on the Ryzen platform. So that's going to be a big change that hopefully they'll be able to make in this new revision. Aside from that, it's also going to be very interesting to see what the Titan V is capable of, despite it being a ridiculous $3,000 graphics card. It's really not designed for the gamer or consumer market, it's a prosumer item, and it's even actually on the edge of just being a professional use item. It's kind of a prosumer item, but, but the people that are going to want it for the main features of deep learning are going to be people that are researching in that industry and using it for that purpose anyway. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Terrius Talks Tech. I know it's a bit late, I was having a lot of computer issues. For some reason my graphics card decided that it didn't want to run anymore and it didn't want my computer to be able to install drivers anymore, so I had to swap that out and fix that. Anyway, if you did enjoy this episode of Terrius Talks Tech, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you feel like it, share it with your friends. Every like and share helps a ton on my videos, it helps the algorithm see them and want to share them with more people. And if you haven't subscribed already, then be sure to click the subscribe icon that should be appearing somewhere around here, I think, maybe. Thank you all for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day.